Bipower Group Limited ASX BPG is an Australian listed company launching the first Australian cryptocurrency exchange and joining me right now is Warwick Power, the strategic advisor to the company. Good day, Warwick. Hey, how are you? Now, a lot of people are wondering what is cryptocurrency, what is a Bitcoin exchange, how's this, how's this relevant? Fill us in on the, sh on the overview. Well, Bitcoin is one of the, uh, the many uh, cryptocurrencies that now exist in the world. It's based on a technology which we call the blockchain. Um, in Europe, people tend to describe it, Tim, as the distributed ledger, which basically is a situation where simultaneously we have many, many computers across the world maintaining the same set of records. What that means is that the records can be maintained in an immutable way. There is no way of going back in time and changing them, so it reduces the risk of fraud and it maintains accuracy of those records for all the participants concerned. So for people new to cryptocurrencies, this is the underlying security mechanism for it, isn't it? It is, it is. It's, uh, it's the creation of trustless trust, if you will, um, on the basis that a distributed network that requires consensus among that network of computers to go through the mathematical uh, challenges to find the answers will actually end up uh, locking in the transactions into that ledger. It's just like an old fashioned ledger in a sense. You're just locking it into the ledger, drawing a line to say, that's it, that's accurate, then turning the page um, and filling the next page in. And so of course, you're on, a, on a blockchain ledger, um, you can access that on a mobile device or on a computer. And it, it really, you don't need an institution to, to deal with that. No, one of the most amazing things, I guess, about the technological development here is that it is changing the shape, if you will, of how information is created and stored and accessed. Traditionally, we've stored information in centralised repositories where we create information, say, at a work terminal and shunt it off to a central server where it's stored. Ditto in financial institutions where the application of blockchain has really started to, to bite quite hard, where traditionally we've relied upon central institutions to maintain the records, to make sure that people's accounts are up to date, that when people are making payments from account A to B, that those accounts are actually and the funds are available. But the distributed ledger actually allows people to do that without the central institution. And of course, in a much more reduced time frame as well. It can actually happen within almost instantaneously, actually. Um, the speed of these transactions can be processed incredibly quickly, not days, but within seconds. Now, we were talking earlier about vendors using cryptocurrency to have transactions. And in Japan, there's a huge number of, of vendors that have accepted the cryptocurrency exchange. Absolutely. Earlier this year, the Japanese government actually passed legislation through the parliament to legalise um, Bitcoin as an acceptable currency within Japan. Unsurprisingly, of course, merchants in Japan are now madly installing the required hardware to be able to accept Bitcoin as part of their uh, lead into the Christmas season, if you will. So this is a really a watershed because now of course, Bitcoin, most people have heard of Bitcoin, that's a, that's a cryptocurrency, but there are many other cryptocurrencies. And in fact, there are a lot of cryptocurrencies coming onto the market now. Yes, absolutely. There's hundreds of cryptocurrencies or digital tokens being created um, almost on a daily basis now. There are projects emerging all over the world which are seeking to use digital tokens and digital coins as central features of how that project ecosystem that connects people who need something and people who can supply something together to form transactions and to form new, new kinds of value, if you will. So I guess as the strategic consultant to Bytepower, this is where you're coming in with the exchange side of things because a cryptocurrency needs some sort of uh, uh, mother or, or board to be able to list, to be able to authenticate the coin to start with and get people aware of it. it what, is, what is the cryptocurrency exchange? How do you see a cryptocurrency exchange in, working here? In many respects, it's almost like the underlying wholesale architecture of a diverse network of ecosystems. Ecosystems that have their own language, if you will. So in this, whether it's a Bitcoin or whether it's Ether or whether it's our own Beef Ledger, for example, in one of our own projects, those particular tokens have been designed for use in a particular kind of ecosystem. Now, that's all well and good when you've got plenty of users within an ecosystem, but the question always remains, well, what do I do if I've got lots of one particular token, for example, but, and I don't need them now? Well, the obvious answer is to create liquidity and exchangeability so that we can uh, exchange one token for another and, in a sense, move between different ecosystems. Exchanges are the platforms by which this happens and which these different worlds connect and become fluid amongst themselves. Are we making it simple enough for people? 
Look, I think one of the big challenges with the blockchain is getting it into a language that is understandable for people. One of the challenges with new innovations generally is to have a language that uh, works by way of analogy in a sense, so that people have a sense of familiarity with what they already know and through that grasp what the new future is. But of course, words like coin are often used and yet coins are not necessarily the best way of describing a digital token. Um, but it's something we're familiar with. We use things like uh, terminology like uh, digital wallets. Well, it's really just an address where you're depositing data. It's not really a wallet in the way we would have thought of as a wallet. So we are trying to find ways in which we bridge different worlds. One of those areas is in, um, is in the one particular application of the Bitcoin, Tim, and that's the ICO, Initial Coin Offering, which many of your viewers and listeners would be familiar with. This year has seen a massive boom in funds raised, resources raised through ICOs. And that terminology gives a sense that this kind of activity is quite similar to a more conventional initial public offering. But there are important differences, and these are differences and similarities that regulators and industry and institutions are starting to get their heads around. I tend to prefer calling them token generation events to try to get that sense of distinction as to how good token designs and good token products are different from the mainstream institutional products that we are accustomed to today. So from, from the perspective of the financial world, of course, they understand commodities, equities, currencies, but where this is really a paradigm shift where you're bringing in this digital address and a, and a digital repository for, for a, a transaction event. How, what's the best way to describe that to somebody who, number one, doesn't trust cryptocurrencies, probably because they don't understand them? Where do we go? We're building an exchange, you're building an exchange, uh, and the first uh, Bitcoin, uh, well, cryptocurrency exchange uh, with a listed company involved. What are the steps to educate people or to get people to understand that this isn't going to bite them? Well, in some ways, uh, we've gone through these sorts of experiences already. When uh, paper money replaced gold money, people would laugh at whether paper money, in fact, was worth anything. When we took real gold out of old gold coins and substituted them with alloys, there was great concern about whether they were worth anything. We then moved from cash to promissory notes like checks, and eventually, we're all very familiar with using uh, cards, and of course, now we're making payments through our phones. Now, that in a sense is just a, a natural journey towards this digitalization of means of payment and means of exchange. Let's face it, our bank accounts these days are really just digital inscriptions. Um, we visualize them through the apps that the banks offer us uh, where, we, where we can drag and drop and we still get a sense of moving money around, but really it's just bits and bytes. And the movement into the cryptocurrency space is not that great a leap from that. What's important is the distributed nature of the, uh, of the network that makes it possible. So where are we going? Um, so well, look, it'd probably be yeah, worth touching on that trust question a little bit. Yeah. Um, Bitcoin and the blockchain was developed, conceptualized um, about nine years ago as a way of addressing a very fundamental question. How do we emulate some attributes of cash in a digital world? And the attributes that uh, the originators of Bitcoin and the blockchain sought to emulate was the idea of anonymity and yet trustworthiness in a world without trust. Now the blockchain enables us to build a level of trust in the network and in the mathematics that support the network. Now that's a, that's a paradigm shift um, because so often in business and in life we're used to dealing with people on a one-to-one -one basis where we build bonds of trust or distrust through experience. What the blockchain enables people to do is interact with each other and transact with each other even though they are absolute strangers. And that's actually very important. The second important point on the trust question, I think, and this is where we're at now at this present stage, is that up until now, the technology has been really at the frontiers, if you will, and in some respects has been uh, uh, mainly occupying what some people would see as Wild West territory. Now, as institutions have begun to understand it, whether it's the ASX, which is developing their own thought process around implementing a blockchain uh, capability within their environment, major banks globally forming consortia to develop um, interbank transactional platforms, um, 
respectable, I guess, groups now getting behind um, the technology. Countries coming to a view on how they're thinking of regulating the instruments that are being created through all of this. We're reaching a point where the platforms that need to be developed have to be developed in an institutional context which is trustworthy. And that's why I think this bite power opportunity is so amazing for Australia. It's anchored in the trustworthy public company environment with you know, decades of regulatory and transparency history around it. So that's an important point. It to sure remember. is, yeah. Um, we are essentially seeing the transition from frontier development to progressive mainstreaming of the technology and the platforms. And in doing that, one of our key focuses is to make sure that the platform created by the public company is a trustworthy piece of wholesale architecture that cultivates an ecosystem which actually strives for excellence, that will screen for excellence, make sure that the projects are worthwhile, robust, well-considered, backed by good people, um, great ideas. That's where we're going with this. It's not just about building a platform and waiting for people to come. It's about taking a proactive step in cultivating an ecosystem which places a premium on excellence and trustworthiness. I think that's what you've brought out is three really good points. Number one, we're coming from a regulatory environment in terms of the ASX listed company. We're building a, well, you're building a cryptocurrency exchange, uh, best of breed, and then you're developing ecosystems that reinforce the integrity of that cryptocurrency. And I think that's probably worth going over again, and particularly the concept of an ecosystem. So for businesses, any business could qualify as an ecosystem. So give me your thoughts on an ecosystem and how that would work with the cryptocurrency. Within the cryptocurrency world, I guess, and from an exchange point of view particularly, we've really got two sides of an ecosystem, a buy side and a sell side, if you will. Um, on the buy side, there are people who want to participate for, as from, a, from an investment point of view, if you will, um, where they're going to purchase tokens, purchase um, cryptocurrencies, exchange them, some even trade them today, as we know. On the other side, of course, we have what I would often call the sell side. And the sell side are businesses and entrepreneurs who see an opportunity to use the new imaginative instruments that we can create in a digital realm through smart contracts and such like, to create new value and to create new configurations of activities, to bring different domains of, of business activity together, whether it's joining um, virtual games um, with real life transactions, integrating entertainment with digital tokens, using digital tokens as ways of incentivizing good behavior and good conduct, whether it's in making sure we've got you know great credentialing in meat which is what we're doing, or right through to um, creating incentives for companies to do the right things, to pursue excellence. So there's lots of ways, I think, in which we as human beings can mobilise our imaginations. What's important, and from this exchange's point of view, is to make sure that the ideas are curated in a way that brings them to the marketplace, which places a premium on trustworthiness, on credibility, transparency and importantly is done in a context where the participating community, what I often call the user um, community, um, understands how these instruments bring new value, are different or similar to existing instruments and has done so on a very transparent basis. Then we've got the basis of taking this technology forward. Well, I'm certain a lot of the viewers will be watching uh, this space with great interest. Warwick Powell, Strategic Advisor for Byte Power Group on the ASX, ASX BPG. Thank you very much for coming Absolute in. Absolute pleasure.